It's about dragons. Again. <laughs> it's about attraction to dragons, and what could I tell about that? Often, um, if, if you look a little bit into the, the more original myths, um, the dragon and the serpent are seen as one, and they're seen as, in a way, the, the order, the power which holds the world together, uh, in a way, as the, the, the emissaries, the, the, um, the guardians which are placed upon us by, by the gods, by the higher powers, to make sure we don't do things the wrong way. So in a way they are, um, they are powerful, um, they are uh, alien, uh, but they are also uh, benevolent uh, because they in a way uh, ensure that uh, we don't cross certain boundaries, we don't do the wrong things. But of course as our egos grow uh, we become less and less attuned to the will of these higher powers and we started to see dragons and experience dragons as, um, as beings which imprison us, which don't allow us to manifest ourselves fully. Because in a way, yeah, they do, because they keep us in alignment with, with the higher powers. And if we want to drift out of alignment with these higher powers, we want to follow lower powers, go into darkness, other things like that, then they are a danger, then they are a threat um, to be dealt with. Um, and these dragons are um, in a way very uh, akin to nature spirits. Uh, so they all arise from the, from the satanic cosmos. They don't serve one person, they serve an area or a people or uh, a region or a culture. Um, often these dragons will also serve gods or goddesses. Um, the dragons have a very good control over, uh, over elemental energies. They have also um, quite a decent control over, over life force. Um, they tend not to have a lot of control over the higher powers. Um, so even though they are uh, powerful, uh, also their own consciousness is rather limited. They're, in a way, uh, servants. They're tasked with a specific task um, and they perform this to, uh, to the best of their ability. Um, when, uh, when working with a, with a dragon, it is really pointless to, to try to fight it because um, their, their energy bodies are really vast compared to our own energy bodies. Um, and dragons relate very strongly actually to our own uh, lower tree chakras. They're very much about us uh, building up strength and being in harmony. So this is also the areas in which dragons can help us, they can teach us. They cannot help us with developing our minds or developing higher goals or purposes. Uh, but they are very good at stabilizing us and reconnecting us with our own power, with our own essence, with our own spirit, with our own memories from previous incarnations. Uh, also reconnecting with all uh, subconscious powers, with egregores. Um, and what dragons are also trying to do is in a way to give certain parts of the world uh, a specific purpose. So they try to shape the nature of the beings who incarnate in their, in their domain. So what you often find is that uh, people of a certain area, they have a certain nature and even though new people migrate there or move in or are transported in or out, eventually the people there will yeah, develop similar characteristics. And this is because of the dragons who are in a way awakening certain aspects of their, uh, of their lower chakras and guiding them to, to like certain things or to dislike certain things. Um, so they're very much a part of the, of the landscape. Um, dragons can also be very attuned to different elements. You have mountain dragons, you have, you have sky dragons, you have river dragons, you have dragons which live in lakes. Um, but the dragon is, is more connected to a certain uh, yeah, body of energy, 
that says something about what element he prefers to use. But most dragons are expertly skilled in using all elements, so they're not limited to it. It is just uh, a preference. Um, dragons are by, by nature uh, very protective uh, beings. Um, and if things are wrong in a certain area, they can be called upon to correct it or to help you to correct it. So one of the things is um, uh, close to the Netherlands there's Njord who lives in the North Sea and um, he's very much a dragon who likes purity and um, when things get too polluted, too stagnant, too dirty um, I can call upon him to purify a place and he can do that with, uh, with great ease. And for instance the city where I live in uh, Breda has two rivers flowing in it and it has two water dragons. They're rather small and, and limited um, but their, uh, their essence is to in a way uh, provide uh, activity, prosperity, life force uh, so they're very supportive in nature, very um, helping the beings to open up by having a stronger energy body to higher impulses, to, in, to be more inspired, uh, to be in a higher vibration um, than in other places. So uh, getting to know the local dragon uh, tells you a lot about the nature of the place and how the nature of the place could influence you if you work together with the dragon or invite the dragon into your life or into your home. One more thing about dragons, because dragons are also in way, often used in a symbolic sense. Um, so in, in the Christian uh, symbolism you have the image of St. George and the dragon and also you have the uh, initiation belt. Um, and both are in a way uh, symbols of controlling your uh, bottom three chakras. Um, so the initiation belt is a belt which is worn rather high, so kind of like around the, uh, the stomach. And this was often uh, given as part of a nightly initiation to show that the person has mastered their inner dragon. So they have developed their strength to their full potential. Um, but uh, even though they are strong, uh, they are not, their own vibration is not dimmed or limited by having access to all these lower centers. They are never dominant over them. So this is the symbol of the initiation belt. And the uh, symbol of uh, the spear and uh, St. George um, is also about uh, leading the dragon. Uh, St. George is usually depicted as riding on a horse. The horse is the symbol of, of leadership and also of knowledge, of insight. Uh, the spear is uh, the symbol of uh, connecting with lower vibrations. And the dragon is in a way the power of the earth. So it is very much also uh, a... St. George, as you may know, is also uh, the patron saint of, of yeah, many regions in, uh, in Britain and in Ireland because he is in a way the druid, <laughs> he is in a way the, uh, the person who becomes one with the land and leads the land and governs the land in harmony with its people. So it is in a way the priest king which is uh, symbolized by St. George.